Hey, what's up guys? Brad here. So today I want to talk about the emotional side of investing. Okay. So Warren Buffett basically said, uh, if, if you learn two things well, you can be a great investor. The first is how to value businesses. And the second is understanding market psychology. Okay. Uh, and that's the second one is really where the human emotion comes in uh, with investing. Um, now, obviously, a lot of people have a lot of kind of emotional things come up when it comes to money, uh, which is obviously uh, a, a central factor in investing. And I want to talk a little bit about my own experience, uh, my own kind of what did I learn about money growing up. Uh, so my dad, my dad is a financial advisor growing up. He was an accountant and he was a financial advisor. And, you know, for, for most of my waking hours, uh, for most of my hours that I was awake as a child, my dad was off at work. Okay. Uh, and, you know, that sent a signal to me. It sent a signal that, all right, money, uh, financial security is, you know, it's hard to come by. It requires sacrifice, okay? You know, he's spending 40, 45, sometimes even 50 hours a week uh, that, that I, don't get, I don't get to see him, okay? I'm at home with my mom or just playing with my siblings. And so just that simple observation as a child, you know, made a big imprint on my relationship today with money and, you know, what, what kind of sacrifice, you know, I think it requires. And then that, that plays into investing, right? So when, essentially when you're investing, you're buying shares in a company, okay? Uh, essentially hitching your wagon to the success of that company. Now, there's, uh, there's certainly a, um, a component where if, if you learn that it takes hard work and sacrifice to make money uh, growing up, like the, you saw the hard work and sacrifice from your parents, um, there can be skepticism uh, when it comes to investing in the stock market. Like, Hey, how is it that I can I can just put money into this business? I don't have to do any of the work, and you know I I just I, I compound my money over time based on what these businesses are doing. Um, there's also, I mean, the the time element is absolutely essential in investing. Uh, there's a lot of what I'm seeing today. Uh, with with Robinhood investors, you know, since every week I cover what Robinhood investors are buying, uh, there's there's a sense of urgency. There's an impatience uh, to make money, and I think you know part of that is um, I'm not happy where I am. Uh, I'm not secure in in where I am now financially, and so you know I'm I'm. Uh, feeling impatient to amass more money because I think, you know, once I have X amount of dollars, uh, things will be different, okay? I won't have these insecurities. Um, I won't have this kind of hole in my sense of value. You know, so much of, of um, I remember the first time I got fired, I was working as the manager for a moving company in Madison, Wisconsin. And, you know, I had no idea what was gonna happen. The, one of the owners called me into the office and um, he said, look, you know, we're gonna have to let you go. This is just not working. Um, our, our relationship isn't working. And so, you know, we, we just need to part ways. And I can remember, um, kind of the, the feeling sense of, of what that was like. It's like my belly sunk. There was definitely fear that came on. Like, okay, this, this source of, you know, income, this, 
you know, source of financial stability and security is, is gone. Like I don't have it anymore. And so it's like the, the bottom kind of dropped out and there's a fear like, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to be okay? It's, it's very primal. Uh, money can really be entwined in these kind of primal security needs. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know, most of us, we buy food from the grocery store, we pay rent or the mortgage. So, you know, if we don't have money, I mean, it, it, now for me, I, I don't know how much this is actually true. If it actually puts, you know, my kind of basic securities in question, I'm sure I could figure out a way to meet those. But emotionally, um, there's that response like, oh, my safety net is gone. And, you know, I think this is what a lot of people experience um, when, you know, they're invested in the stock market and there's like a 50% drop, you know, say you've been putting 10, 20% of your income in your investment portfolio for say 20 years, 20 years of your working life, right? You've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in there. And then, you know, in a short span of time, a couple months, you go from say $200,000 to $100,000, you know, that's $100,000. It looks like you've lost in your investment portfolio. And let's say, you know, you're making 50,000 a year, you're putting 10% in, that's 5,000 a year. I mean, $100,000 right there, that's 20 years worth of, well, if you have 200,000, hopefully a lot of that is gains, right? Not just, um, principle uh, or contributions, but you see what I'm saying? It can seem like you're losing years of, you know, your, your working life that you've put into your investment portfolio. And so that's, that's terrifying. Uh, one of the reasons Ray Dalio uh, came up with the all weather portfolio is, you know, it, it generates about 10% per year, uh, I think over the long run but you don't have these severe, uh, the, the severe volatility that you have if you're only invested in the stock market. Um, and people can really underestimate the, the impact of, you know, even if it doesn't really matter over the long term, if you're a long term stock market investor, the impact of your portfolio going down by 50% uh, in a short period of time triggers all of these emotions and fear, you know, uh, scarcity. And people pull out at exactly the wrong time after these corrections happen, uh, exactly when stock prices are actually getting cheaper, um, which is why I say in previous videos, you know, if, if you're a passive investor, if you're investing in index funds every month or every couple months uh, and if I could share one hack for how to improve your performance in that passive investing approach, uh, try to contribute more when everyone is running away from the stock market, when headlines are the bleakest, that's when you should be piling more money in. Uh, and when things are euphoric, right? When everyone thinks the stock market is just gonna go up to the clouds forever, you know, maybe scale it back a little bit. That's, that's probably the time where your dollars aren't gonna go quite as far in the stock market. Um, so anyway, I mean, so much of the stock market is emotion driven, driven by, you know, the emotions that individual humans are feeling. Their, their individual relationships with money and all of the emotions that arise from that relationship, which, you know, is largely formed in childhood, how we observed, you know, how did our, our parents uh, relate to work and to money? Um, did you have enough growing up? You know, the, the, so it's, it's really important to explore for yourself, particularly if you're going to do any kind of active um, investing, picking individual stocks, trying to, you know, time 
when you get when you get in when you get out of of certain companies if you're going to do anything like that it's really important to understand your own emotional landscape particularly as it relates to money to your account going up to your account going down um, and I, I think people don't put enough uh, emphasis on on that super important factor um, it's it's really what drives the market in the short term is human emotion you know that's if you're a long-term investor you know and and you can ride it out and you can you know be very rational about it and and try to remove emotion invest mechanically um, you're gonna do very well over the long term uh, because the market is not this emotional roller coaster in the short term or in in the long term it's not an emotional roller coaster it uh, over the long term it really tracks you know the actual performance of businesses so as the economy grows as the US economy grows uh, stocks are going to do well over time, especially if you're investing in an index fund. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a fascinating exploration to to look at you know what emotions arise in relationship to making money. What expectations do you have about you know who you need to be, or what you need to believe, or how you need to act in order. Uh, to make money investing another big thing around how you need to act is a lot of people i mean when it comes to money they think more effort more money more doing more money and when it comes to stocks that's that's generally not true the more activity you have in your portfolio um, usually the worse people do over time okay because you know a lot of that activity is emotion driven. Uh, great businesses at, quali at at attractive prices don't come along very often. Uh, like like now I'm looking at what Robinhood investors are buying. You know there's, there's not a lot of compelling uh, value investments to be had right now. The the market is is fairly high in terms of you know price to earnings ratios and other metrics of you know whether companies are a good investment, a good buy right now, a good price or kind of overpriced. And you see what people are doing in the markets. Like they're, they're buying Nikola, they're buying Hertz. The companies people are buying, I mean, it's so speculative. And I think part of that is because people just wanna do something, right? They don't wanna let the cash pile up and have the patience until these compelling investment opportunities come along, right? So, you know, there's just so much, there's so much to learn about ourselves uh, in terms of that emotional dynamic uh, when it comes to money and investing. And, you know, I'm curious to hear from you. What, uh, what insights do you have about yourself when it comes to um, making decisions based on emotion or uh, what emotions come up for you when, uh, when you think about investing. Um, there's a lot of fear of missing out right now. Uh, I'm definitely seeing that. And uh, you know, everybody's seeing their neighbors get rich as, as stocks just go up and up. And it's like, oh, there's, there's, so there's envy and there's greed that come in and cause people to make some pretty stupid decisions when it comes to investing. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to open that up. I'm sure I'll do more videos about kind of the emotional side of investing in the future. Um, just wanted to kind of open it up and explore it for myself in this video today. So let me know what you think if you'd like to see more of this uh, or if you wouldn't. And please smash that subscribe button. I'm chugging my way up to a thousand subscribers. Um, adding about 10 a day, which feels really good. That's quite validating for, for the effort that I'm putting into these videos. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.